Hey friends, fall is in the air and you know what that means. Crock pot season is here. Today I'm sharing 10 of my favorite easy and delicious crock pot recipes that are perfect for fall or really any time of year. We've got something for everyone from beef and chicken dump and go recipes to hearty soups, pastas, and even dessert. These are the recipes my family request over and over. I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen and welcome to Croptober, friends. Let's get started with a creamy Cajun chicken soup. First thing that I have to do to make this soup is to make me a Cajun seasoning <laughs> because I don't have any Cajun seasoning or Old Bay. So I'm just going to start with sort of a basic recipe I found for Cajun seasoning. And I'm not putting in the cayenne pepper because I don't have any and I don't like hot stuff. So I don't know why I wanted this Cajun soup because I don't really like hot, hot stuff. But I'm going to customize it sort of to how I like. It just looked delicious. So I'm going to start out with a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, then a half a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of pepper, quarter teaspoon of salt, it calls for a teaspoon of oregano and thyme, which I don't have either one of those, but I'm just going to use two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. It has both those in it. Then the main thing in here is your paprika. going to get two teaspoons of that. And that's going to be our seasoning. And I am definitely using what I have. This calls for onions, peppers, celery, carrots. I did not have any celery or carrots or any kind of soup starter in my freezer. But I did have this three pepper and onion blend. So this is what I'm going to use. Got my crock pot greased and I've got two decent size frozen chicken breast and then two smaller ones in here. And... I'm just going to go in with this bag of peppers and onions, and I thought I would chop them, but I just decided not to because they're not that big, and I think they'll cook up just fine in here. going to put in a couple little spoonfuls of some minced garlic. going to use one can of petite diced tomatoes, and I'm going to leave their juice in here. This recipe called for fire roasted. I will have this original recipe linked for you in the description box so you can make it according to the recipe if you like. Coming in with about two cups of chicken broth. Then I'm gonna sprinkle in about two tablespoons of our seasoning mixture. And that just about used all that up. So yeah, I'm just gonna put it all in. I'm gonna set this on high for about three or four hours. I've got just a couple of quick errands to run. Then when I get back, we will add all of our creamy ingredients. I did come back just a few minutes later and I gave everything a really good stir just to make sure all those seasonings got down in the broth so that while this was cooking up all day, everything would get a chance to get seasoned. Okay, after four hours, I cut this down to low and I just left it on low all day long. I'm just going to take my little meat chopper tool and I'm just going to shred this chicken up right in here. Now into this, I'm taking an eight ounce block of cream cheese and I did try to cube it up just a little bit to help it along, but you know how cream cheese is. Now I'm just going to stir in a quarter cup heavy cream. I'm just going to stir this in and let this sit on low for about 30 minutes. I'm going to make some cornbread so that ought to be about the perfect amount of time to get all this cream cheese dissolved and melted down in here. Now this is smelling delicious. It may not look so appetizing. You know how some of these soups are, but it is smelling good. <laughs> I make my cornbread very simply. It's basically just the recipe off the back of the Martha White cornmeal mix bag. And then I just do a few little extra steps to it. If you're interested in a really good cornbread, I'll link a video below where my mom and my dad and I did some cooking together. And dad showed his cornbread method and his recipe. It's next level. So if you want some cornbread inspiration, be sure and check that out. 
but I'll have to say my cornbread turned out pretty good this day and it paired perfectly with this creamy Cajun chicken soup. This soup was amazing. I'm always looking for a good soup recipe that I think will please everybody in the house. I love soup, but Patrick's not that keen on it, so I'm really choosy about trying new things because I don't want to waste it. He absolutely loved this one and I did too. For us, it had the perfect amount of seasoning and of course you can customize this and spice it up as much as you like but this was perfect for us we topped ours with a little sour cream and some cheddar cheese and green onions this is definitely one that I am so happy I tried I've got another soup I can pull out and do in the crock pot on these colder winter days can't wait to have this again and the leftovers were twice as nice now I have a crock pot meal and really it's just the sauce that you make in the crock pot and you start out with some stewed tomatoes. I'm making half of this recipe and I am chopping up those stewed tomatoes really little because my family is not big on like big pieces of stewed tomatoes and then it calls for marinara sauce some basil it calls for oregano which i did not have so i just used a little bit more of the italian seasoning that i put in and some crushed red pepper flakes uh, just to your liking and you know i don't like things very very spicy and then a nice big tablespoon of worcestershire sauce and what i think really makes this good is the beef bouillon then you're going to put also in a tablespoon of sugar to cut some of that acid and some salt and pepper. And I have just sprayed my crock pot really well and then I am mixing all this up in the crock pot. And like I said, this doesn't look like much, but I'm halving this recipe. And this is also a very beefy pasta dish. It doesn't have so much of like an Italian lasagna spaghetti flavor it's very beefy and here comes the beef part it's just a pound of ground beef with some onions cooked up in it and i did add some garlic i'm going to drain all the grease off of that and then i'm just going to put it into my crock pot with the tomato and all of the seasonings that i've got mixed up in there i'm going to stir that up really good Cut it on low and let it cook all day long. The longer the better. Mine cooked for about six or seven hours. And since I had a skillet out, I had a bag of frozen spinach and I'm just gonna go ahead and get my spinach a little thawed out. Stick it in the refrigerator and you're gonna put that in the very last thing. Now look at that meat sauce, how thick it gets. Like I said, it's not a soupy sauce it's a very meaty sauce so after it's cooked you're going to go in with about a fourth a cup of parmesan cheese and then about a cup of mozzarella cheese and i have been boiling some pasta over on the stove i've drained the bow ties off and i'm going to mix them and the cheese into this meat sauce look how yummy and melted that cheese is getting and I'm just going to put the lid on it and then I actually cut it up on high and I let it sit for about 30 more minutes. Very last thing, after the 30 minutes is up, I'm going to bring that spinach that I have wilted and I'm just going to mix that into this. Everyone at my house loved this dish. It's not overly tomatoey. It's not overly cheesy. It's just a, just a very hearty pasta dish. I served it up with some garlic bread that I just toasted up in the oven and a big old salad, of course. Tonight's dinner is inspired once again by Luke Brown cooking in the Midwest. I can blame him for my addiction to this Buffalo Wild Wings Parm garlic sauce. We're doing a crock pot chicken meal tonight first things first spray that crock pot y'all saw that humongous six and a half pound bag of frozen chicken from costco but i'm only gonna use two of those chicken breasts go ahead and season this up with some salt and some pepper 
I'm going to use a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of paprika. Also putting in a nice big spoonful of garlic. Now we're going to cover it with this Buffalo Wild Wings Parmesan garlic sauce. And I have one bottle here that's probably got about half left in it. I'm going to use it up first. I finished off that one bottle of sauce and then I put a little milk in it because this stuff is thick. Shook it up real good and poured that in here. Then I probably used about half of another bottle that I just opened. Doesn't have to be swimming in it, but you do want it coated pretty good. And all these seasonings, they're fine just like they are. When this starts cooking down a little bit, I will come over here and stir it all around and make sure everything's coated and mixed up sufficiently. Pop that lid on and I'm gonna cook mine on high. Probably be three or four hours. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm just getting dinner started in the crock pot. We are definitely on summer hours around here. I don't know about y'all, but it just does not take long for us to get off schedule. With just me and Patrick here a lot of the time, it was like nine o'clock last night. He was grilling us a steak for supper. <laughs> That's just how it happens. I told him it made me uh, think back to, uh, do y'all remember back when everything was on lockdown back in the awful times? And we got so messed up on our eating schedule. My kids thought it was so funny. They're like, we don't even know what we're eating and when, what meal it is, if it's breakfast or dinner or what time it's going to be. We just, things went crazy. And I kind of feel like he's been home a lot more, you know, and we've just been doing other things and we have gotten all out of kilter here. But anyway, four o'clock, supper's going in. We might eat it at midnight. We might eat it at eight or nine o'clock, but I do think all the kids will be here tonight helping with something. So it'll be ready for them. This chicken has been cooking four hours and you can see it is perfectly done. And instead of shredding it tonight, I think I am gonna chunk it up a little bit. That is a nice change from just shredding it all the time. We're just gonna take every bit of that chicken and put it right back in all that yummy sauce. Gonna take one jar of your favorite Alfredo and put this in. This recipe doesn't have any cream of soups or any cream cheese, but I think this creamy Alfredo just takes the place of it. I'm also gonna put in about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, a nice large cup of mozzarella cheese, then we're just going to stir all that together and get all those wonderful seasonings incorporated all throughout here. Pop this lid back on and let it sit on low. While all my cheese and Alfredo is getting mixed into that sauce, I'm going to boil a 16 ounce box of pasta about 10 or 12 minutes so it's nice and done. Here comes this pound of pasta. I'm in my little crock pot tonight. It might take me just a minute to get all this stirred together, but I'll get there and I'm just going to leave it right in this crock pot. I went ahead and turned it off or you could just flip it over to keep warm. Friends, you know I love these flavors. This was absolutely delicious. And don't sleep on your crock pots in the summertime. They're a wonderful way to cook a home-cooked meal without heating up your oven. And you can use them outside when you're camping. And if you're at the park and you have a pavilion where you have electricity, bring those crock pots. We do this all the time. We just put wieners right in a crock pot or line them up all around the sides and standing up. And they cook up perfectly and keep warm the whole time and do a crock pot of chili and nacho cheese. You are set with no trouble and easy cleanup if you use a crock pot liner. When it comes to these delicious crock pot meals or any recipe, starting with high quality ingredients makes all the difference. That's why I'm very excited to share today's sponsor, Good Chop. They deliver high quality, sustainably sourced meat and seafood right to your door. And their customizable boxes let you pick exactly what what you need 
whether it's premium cuts or everyday essentials. You've seen me cook Good Chops 100% grass-fed ribeyes, filet mignon, wild-caught salmon, lots of chicken and ground beef, pork chops, shrimp, and more. And just this week, I made crab legs at home for the first time ever. I had no idea how easy they were gonna be to cook, and they were absolutely delicious. Mm. Oh gosh, that is good. That is delicious. With over 70 high-quality cuts to choose from, they truly have something for everyone. I've been enjoying Good Chop for over a year, and the quality and convenience is unbeatable. Good Chop prides itself on offering meat with no antibiotics, added hormones, or artificial ingredients. And they back it all up with a 100% money-back guarantee, so you can try it risk-free. And by choosing Good Chop, you're supporting local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the U.S as Good Chop sources their meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. And right now, they have an amazing deal for my viewers. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MAMAMAIL130 or click the link in the caption below to get $130 off across your first four boxes. Enjoy the quality and convenience that Good Chop has to offer. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MAMAMAIL130 or or click the link below to receive $130 off across your first four boxes. And thank you, Good Chop, for being a longtime supporter of the channel. I decided that last minute today, I'm going to throw some chili in the crock pot. I've got to go to the store. You know, I just don't go to the grocery store as much as I used to now that the kids are a little bit older and they're working and that kind of stuff. So uh, I had pretty much everything that I needed on hand to do it. And I'm going to start out. I have some frozen diced onions and I'm going to start them off in the skillet first before I ground, ground my ground beef in here. <laughs> That's hard to say. Okay. Ground beef. I always have that in the freezer. Got that thawed out in the microwave. Putting it in here to get it ground up with these onions and cook it through. While that's going on, I'm gonna open up all my cans over here. I'm missing one set of beans. I'll tell you about that here in a second. And of course my coffee, I'm just drinking it. But you know, I think I've seen a chili recipe one time where they put coffee in it or espresso or something. I don't know, they put it in everything, brownies and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's let this cook up and we'll start filling that crock pot. And the most time consuming part of this crock pot meal is opening all these cans. First things first, spray this crock pot good. Make for easy cleanup. And I use two 15 ounce cans of pinto beans. And if you're in the South, you know we love our Lux canned pinto beans. These also come in a bigger can. It's probably 28 ounces. Sometimes I'll just use one big can. I usually keep one big can just to make my chili with. What I'm missing is my chili beans. Usually I put in Bush's chili beans, two 15 ounce cans, or they also have a big one. I don't have those. I can't believe I didn't have that on hand, but I'll grab that when I'm out at the store today and put it in when I get home. I put in one can of Rotel diced tomatoes with green chilies. I don't drain any of the juice off of it. I put in two of these small eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, or you can get the big 15 or 16 ounce can. I also fill these up with water and add that in. And I just buy the smaller cans because it gives me options. I'm not always making huge meals like I used to. Now our ground beef and onions is cooked all the way through. I'm going to put that in. And this is the perfect amount for this size crock pot. And this is a four quart oval shaped crock pot. And I've got just enough room for my two cans of chili beans. And the secret ingredient of this chili is this French's Chilio. I have been using this for over 30 years. My mom turned me on to this when I first got married and there's nothing like it. I can't explain the flavor. It's not hot, like going to burn your mouth spicy, but it is like full of flavor. It's warm. It has a little bit of even a sweetness to it. 
It's delicious and you don't have to buy it in this huge canister. I just get this at Sam's or Costco because, you know, I use it a lot. Um, this does come in the envelopes if you just want to try it in your seasoning aisle, but there's nothing like Chilio. I absolutely love it. And of course, I have the measurements written out on the top of mine, but it does take a half a cup. That's actually what comes in one envelope of it. Then I always sprinkle just a little bit more. I'm kind of extra like that. Get that all stirred in. Now, if you make this on top of the stove, all you got to do is get it up to a boil and then just let it simmer. Hey, 15 minutes, we, we have eaten it that quick before, but it is better after it sets for a while, just like any kind of chili like this or stew or anything. I'm gonna put the lid on here and I'm gonna cook it on low. I'm gonna let it cook just as long as I can. So once I get home from the store, I'm gonna put my chili beans in here. I might turn it over to high for just a little bit, but uh, hey, it's good to sit here all day long for us. I went ahead and cut this up on high before I left out today. It is boiling really good. I just felt like it wasn't getting hot quick enough for me. And I picked up two of the 15 ounce cans of chili mild beans. This is not chili like you eat on hot dogs, but they're called chili beans. I'm not draining or rinsing these or anything either. And I told you, this chili filled this four quart crock pot up exactly. Okay, I'm just gonna mix my chili beans down in here, pop this lid back on it, and I'm just gonna let it sit here another couple hours till we're ready for dinner, and I'm gonna leave it on high. I love to eat my chili with Fritos or even just plain old saltine crackers. I like to put cheddar cheese and sour cream, and I love green onions or even red onions on the top of mine. I also love to put it over the top of a big baked potato. I just love hearing all the different ways that people eat their chili. Let me know in the comments tonight how you like to eat your chili. And there's nothing else I can say about this. It's delicious. We finished off the whole crock pot this week between our family. It was great. It's crock pot time. We're gonna make a chicken bacon ranch pasta. I'm gonna start by spraying my crock pot really well. I'm putting in about one pound of chicken breast. Could probably get away with three of these, but the packages I thought out had two each. So that's what we're going with. They're kind of small. I'm gonna season this with some salt and some black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of some paprika and a half teaspoon of onion powder. And it wouldn't be ranch chicken without a big tablespoon of some ranch seasoning powder. Can't forget a big tablespoon of minced garlic as well. Now I'm gonna to top it with the 15 ounce jar of Alfredo sauce. Use your favorite kind. And at this point, a lot of people like to put the bacon portion in, but I like to wait until the end when everything is done. That way it's good and crispy. If you can't tell from the seasonings, this is a Luke Brown cooking in the Midwest recipe. If you're not already, you need to be following him. He's on TikTok, Instagram, and he's got a Pinterest page. He does lots of quick and easy recipes like this. He doesn't use a lot of crazy ingredients that you wouldn't be able to find. Cooking this on low for four to six hours until that chicken is thoroughly done. It's been about four and a half hours. Everything smells delicious, looks delicious, and I'm just gonna use my little mix and chop tool to shred my chicken up right here in the crock pot. If you want to, you can pull it out and chop it up into more bite-sized pieces, but I don't mind mine being shredded up like this at all. Still have my crock pot on low, and I'm just gonna put a big generous cup of mozzarella cheese on here, stir it around just a little bit. Gonna pop the lid back on here so all that can get melted up. Meanwhile, over on the stove, I'm cooking up 16 ounces of penne pasta. Use any kind of short pasta that you would like here. Now that your pasta's cooked up, I'm just gonna dump it all right in this crock pot. Of course, I did drain it first. <laughs> and now, I'm gonna mix all of it together with this yummy chicken mixture. The flavor of this is a lot like the crack chicken alfredo lasagna roll-ups that I make. 
but you don't have to roll it up. This dish can easily feed a family of four with tons of leftovers for lunches. It's perfect for a big family dinner night. I don't know anybody who doesn't love these flavors. It's also one of those recipes that is so easy and works so perfectly to be cut in half for just a smaller family of two to three people. And even then, you'll probably have some leftovers because, you know, it stretches a really long way. It is quick, so easy, and oh so delicious. You just dump and go. Then all you have to do when you get home is boil your pasta. On really busy weeknights, I'll use the bags of pre-cooked bacon bits. Mmm, it is so flavorful and oh, 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 so delicious. Today, we're gonna make some French dip sandwiches in the crock pot. It just takes a very few simple ingredients and I've got about a two and a half pound chuck roast and this thing's still pretty much froze solid. <laughs> I put it from the freezer into the refrigerator yesterday, but that's okay. The crock pot is so forgiving. I cook things from frozen in here a lot. So let's get it started. First things first, give that crock pot a little spray just to keep things from sticking. I'm gonna put this huge roast in here and this two and a half pound roast is just perfect for this size crock pot for me. And I'm just going to season this one side with some black pepper, no salt because all these soups have quite a bit of sodium in them. This one's truly a dump and go today. We're gonna to put in one can of condensed beef broth, one can of beef consomme, and one can of French onion soup. I'm also gonna put in about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar. If you had red wine, that's perfect, I don't. So I'm using red wine vinegar. You could also use red grape juice or even pomegranate juice. It gives you sort of that same flavor. If you had time to sear your meat, you can definitely do that. I just don't have time today, but it makes a beautiful color to it. And you got all that grease that you can put down in here, you know, to start cooking. But honestly, it cooks up just fine, just like it is, true dump and go. And I am gonna cook mine on high today. It can go as long as I need it to go. The longer it sets, the more tender this is going to pull apart. But since mine's frozen, I am going to put it on high just to give it the kickstart and get it cooking good and hard. My roast cooked up about six hours on high. And like I said, the longer and harder, the better on a chuck roast. It is just falling apart tender. Now I do like to go through my roast and pick out the big pieces of fat. Nobody really wants to eat that, but you can see how these two forks just pull this apart and it is so good. Again, it was just me and Patrick here tonight. So I put ours on the sub rolls and I just loaded up one side with some provolone cheese then I just loaded it up with some of this roast. I put some provolone cheese back over the top of the roast and we put this in the broiler just long enough to melt this cheese. Topped these with a little bit of mayonnaise if you wanted some horseradish sauce or if you wanted to saute up some onions and green peppers, that would be beautiful too. You can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. Now I do use my reserve juice to dip in like au jus. I couldn't find my little ramekins, but you know what? These salsa containers worked just fine. We ain't too fancy around here. And let's start with some crock pot chicken tortilla soup. This one starts with four boneless, skinless chicken breasts. These were still frozen and I am just putting them in the crock pot straight out of the freezer. Next, I'm gonna throw in some chopped onions. This is also just frozen convenience food that I buy to have on hand a lot of times. If you don't have a fresh onion to chop up, it's great to have on hand. I'm also throwing in one can of sweet whole kernel corn and not draining this at all. I'm also gonna put in one can of red enchilada sauce. This little can packs a lot of punch in adding flavor to this soup. Also putting in one can of Rotel. I'm using Great Value brand. I use store brands all the time. Also one can of black beans. Those I did rinse and drain. 
Gonna add in two cups of chicken broth. And I always like to add in just an additional cup of water to make sure I have enough liquid in my soup. Gonna put in an entire packet of taco seasoning. And I always like to use a little bit of salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. I'm also going to throw in about a half of a teaspoon of chili powder to give it some more depth in the flavor of it. I'm just going to stir this together, put the lid on this, and I let it cook on low all day long. You can also cook this on high and it'll be ready in about four hours or so. You just need to make sure that that chicken is cooked all the way through. When I came home from work that afternoon, I checked my chicken was done, and I'm just taking my meat chopper and chopping that chicken up with it, shredding it right down in the pot. I don't even pull it out and shred it on a plate. You can just push it up to the side of your crock pot, and this little tool does all the work for you. Now, I have seen people shred up regular little flour tortillas and drop that down in here and let that cook along with the soup. I've never personally made it like that, but I've had it made like that at other places, and that was really good. But a lot of my family likes to eat this with corn chips. It's wonderful over cornbread or rice if you enjoy that. But I really like to use just some plain old white corn tortilla chips with mine. I did not even put any sour cream or green onions on it today. I just put some more cheese on the top of mine and let it melt. And that was simply perfect. This little crock pot soup is so easy, but these simple ingredients combined in that crock pot all day long, they just combine and give such a great flavor. You can tell by our ingredients tonight, this is gonna be a flavorful, flavorful recipe. It's the crock pot marry me chicken pasta. There's nothing I like better than a dump and go crock pot recipe. And I've already got my chicken here in the crock pot. I'm starting by seasoning it with some salt and black pepper. We're also gonna use about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of paprika, and just a quarter teaspoon, if that, of crushed red pepper. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in a big old tablespoon of minced garlic. And I'm putting in a third of a cup of some diced sun-dried tomatoes. I get questions about sun-dried tomatoes often in the comments. So in case I've missed your comment or question, I just want to answer some of the most common things that I get asked. Can they use regular tomatoes? Well, you can. As a matter of fact, my mom makes Tuscan chicken all the time and she uses the grape tomatoes and cuts them in half. It tastes great, but I will say these sun-dried tomatoes, they do have a different taste and a different texture. They're also packaged with herbs in an oil, so when you make anything that is Mary Me Chicken or Tuscan Chicken, you miss a little bit of flavor that this adds if you use regular tomatoes. And I think the reason that people ask that is because these can be a little bit pricey. This is an eight and a half ounce jar. This is what I normally always get at Kroger's. It might be more where you are, but I get three uses out of this jar. I have already made one recipe with it. I used a third of a cup today, and I have probably another third of a cup left. For me, that's worth the price. And I'm not disagreeing with anybody. Don't get me wrong. They are more expensive. I'm not arguing that fact, but I'm just kind of giving you the info of, to me, why it's worth buying it. Plus, it's something I keep in my pantry all the time now. So I look for it when it's on sale, I stock up. This recipe does call for two 15 ounce jars of Alfredo sauce. So I'm gonna use one of the Ragu Classic Alfredo. Get every drop out of there with some milk or water. <laughs> For the second jar, I'm using a Ragu Roasted Garlic and Parmesan Alfredo sauce. And this sounds like a lot of sauce, but we're gonna be putting a pound of cooked pasta in here after this chicken cooks. This is a recipe that would be very easy to cut in half for just two people, but I'm planning on sharing some of this with the family. That's all there is to it. It's just dump, 
go. You don't even stir it. I'm going to cook mine on high for about four hours. That was one pound of frozen chicken breast I had in here. So I want it to cook high and quick. We'll come check it in a bit. Now that the chicken's done, I'm just going to remove it from the crock pot. Today, I'm going to cut it into bigger chunks. Sometimes I like to shred it right in the crock pot, but sometimes I like bigger chunks. While I'm doing this, I've got a 16 ounce box of pasta pulling up over here on top of the stove. You're welcome to use spaghetti here, but y'all know I just don't like those squirmy long noodles. Now that I have my chicken in here, I'm gonna put in one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna throw in about a quarter cup of Parmesan. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice stir and get all of this incorporated before I put my pasta in. Now we're just gonna put our drained pasta down in here. I'm gonna save a little bit out for a Caesar salad this week, and let's get all of this mixed together. Patrick has already been in here taste testing chicken while I was cutting it up and he said it is delicious. At this point, I do have my crock pot turned over to warm. Go pop the lid back on it and pull the rest of dinner together. I can't say enough good things about this Marry Me Chicken. This was based on a Luke Bryan cooking in the Midwest TikTok video that I saw and it hit all the marks with me, the cheese, the sun-dried tomatoes, the garlic, all the goodness. I served it along with a big side of steamed broccoli. Guys, this was delicious. You're gonna love it. Now, my husband's very most favorite crock pot meal is his Salisbury steak. The first thing I'm gonna do is mix up the sauce that will go over it. And I'm making about a cup and a half of beef broth. And I just keep these little bouillon packets. You just add water and it makes broth very budget friendly. And it doesn't take up a lot of room in your pantry either. Into that broth, you're gonna stir in one package of brown gravy mix. This one here is a little bit under an ounce and that was fine because I just had a pound of meat. Into that, we're just gonna use two tablespoons of regular old ketchup. Gonna squirt in about one teaspoon of some Dijon mustard. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of parsley flakes. I'm just kinda guessing here, maybe a teaspoon. Stir all that together, and then you're just gonna set that aside while you make up your meat patties. Like I said, I'm just using about a pound of ground beef. Into this, I'm just gonna use these dried chopped onions. I just had a little bit of onion when I made this, so I wanted to save my fresh onion to go into the crock pot. I'm also gonna put in about a third a cup of some panko breadcrumbs to help hold this together. Gonna season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Gonna give this about a teaspoon of some chopped minced garlic. And just a couple of tablespoons of milk. Finally, just using the yolk from one egg. I'm just gonna mix all of this together and get it very well incorporated. And I made four just kind of hamburger sized patties out of what I had. Now browning these patties is totally optional, but I always like to do it if I have the time. I love to get that color on it, and I like to render some of that grease off for some extra added flavor. Now I am just taking a regular sweet onion and I'm just slicing that up and putting it in the bottom of my crock pot that I have sprayed. And I have even pre-prepped this crock pot recipe at night before, made everything, even browned up my patties and just put them in the crock pot, kept my little uh, broth mixture separate and poured that grease over into it. Then in the morning, all I had to do was pour my little gravy mixture over top and I was good to go. But once you get your 
patties browned up just put them over on top of those onions and you don't want to forget your grease you definitely want that added flavor in there and then just pour your gravy mixture all over the top I have cooked this all day long before on low and it just gets better the longer it sits. You can also cook it on high for about four hours and it's perfectly done and tender then as well. Once mine's ready, I kind of look and think I want to thicken up my sauce a little bit. So I just remove the steak patties and then I'll mix up a little bit of slurry with some flour or you could use cornstarch and some water and I'll just pour that into that gravy and mix it in and then I turn the crock pot back up to high and let it sit there for about 10 minutes and that will really thicken that gravy right up. Then of course, I put my steaks right back in there and get them all covered with that gravy. This meal, I cannot tell you how many times I've made it. My husband is not a big fan of the crock pot meal, believe it or not, as much as I love him. He likes meat and potatoes, but this right here, he loves when I make this. This is the best way I've ever found to make Salisbury steak. It is never tough. It always has an amazing flavor, tender and delicious. Of course, I love to serve it with mashed potatoes and cover them in gravy. This is just some instant ones. And I made some brown sugar glazed carrots and just an old can of doctored up green beans. This is a stick to your ribs, warm and cozy recipe that is perfect for fall and our upcoming colder days. Surely you did not think that Mama would send you home on Thanksgiving without dessert? We cannot let that happen, but let's make it in the crock pot. It's a pumpkin chocolate lava cake. My family is crazy for these crock pot lava cakes now. First things first, we're going to get our cake portion mixed together, and I'm using just a regular yellow cake mix. I'm thinking a chocolate cake mix it might be good in here would make it like double chocolate pumpkin lava cake. We're gonna add one cup of water, one third cup of oil, three eggs, one cup of canned pumpkin. This is not pumpkin pie filling, this is actual pure pumpkin. Next is a third a cup of brown sugar. I've been baking with this Splenda brown sugar blend and with this, you use half the amount you would use of normal brown sugar. And we're going to add one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Normally, I would just mix this by hand, but I've got a few extra ingredients in here, and I want to make sure they are incorporated really well. Let's get our crock pot sprayed with some nonstick spray. And now we're going to pour our cake batter right into our crock pot. Now we're taking one small, and when I say small, it's the 3.9 ounce box of instant chocolate pudding mix. And I'm just going to mix that with two cups of cold water. This part right here, I just always whisk it by hand. These instant puddings will start to set up really quick. They don't take much work at all. Now we're gonna take that pudding mix and we're just gonna pour that right over the top of our cake. Last but not least, I've got a bag of chocolate chips. This is an 11 and a half ounce bag, anywhere from, you know, 10 to 12 ounces, just your standard size chocolate chip bag. I'm gonna put that all over the top, the entire confection. Could not be any easier. A guava cake you cook on high for about two and a half to three hours. I have made one in this four quart oval crock pot before and it turned out perfectly. Now, of course, this one has a little bit different ingredients in the cake mixture, but I'll check it at two and a half hours and hopefully it will turn out just as good as the chocolate lava cake I made. You know, every crock pot cooks different and is different, as my turkey was a great example of that. <laughs> so we'll see what we got. It has been two and a half hours, 
it smells amazing. You're supposed to be done when you come out with moist crumbs, okay. Mine is not anywhere near done. Let's give it another 30 minutes. That's a total of three hours. Oh yeah, that feels different now. I believe we're done. We're gonna leave the lid off of this crock pot. I'm gonna turn it completely off. And now, here's the hard part. I gotta sit here for 10 minutes, smelling that, just waiting for it to get all set up. I am ready to dig in. Look, you can see the chocolate down in there. Oh my goodness, look at that. Again, these lava cakes, they're not the prettiest dessert in town, but I tell you what, they are the tastiest. Look at that. Look at it. Look at that. Oh my word. This thing is amazing. It is over the top. I love the pumpkin and that pumpkin pie spice with the chocolate combo, this is a great one. Watch this video next for more quick and easy dinner recipes. And thank you so much, friends, for choosing to spend some of your day with me. Until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.